All right, guys, welcome back from the shorter break. It was actually shorter than seven minutes. So yep. uh, we're happy to hear. I think things got situated and everybody is ready to go. Again, I'm nice to joined here with Mirko. And like you mentioned uh, earlier, he also dealt with what the team from Indonesia is dealing with. Yeah, but we're happy to have you here once again. And we can't wait to get this match started. It is if you guys missed it, it's between Myanmar and Indonesia. This is a battle for the first slot to the WEC in Riyadh later this year. So that's that's to catch you guys up. If you also want to keep an eye on what's going on here or what has happened in the past throughout the group stage and, and everything else, you can go to isf.gg. Check out the brackets if you want and all the statistics we got to see. Because again, Myanmar undefeated in their matches they had one loss to cambodia in a game anyway they went eight and one basically in the group stage and uh, indonesia had one loss to malaysia on their way through here so for me and mars lineup we're going to look at it once again it's ken justin ruby dd juno and zide and these guys are very you know a lot of us are, are very familiar with them by now and i could say mirko they have been like performing out of their minds so far for this entire tournament. They've definitely practiced their minds out, right? And technically, yeah. when we're taking a look at you know this roster, it's a roster full of veterans. Well, at least for Ken, Justin, and Ruby DD, especially Ruby DD. This guy's been, you know, at the forefront for Myanmar esports for MLBB in Myanmar for the longest time. I think M2 was really when he shined, right? That Ruby DD combo as well. That's what we call it now. The Lunox combo when you go in with the Chaos Flicker into the Brilliance, that's a Ruby DD combo. He's kind of immortalized his name in MLBB, and it's great to see that he's still here playing at the highest level of MLBB. Now going up against Indonesia, um, I would say for the lineup of Indonesia, compared to Ruby DD at least, right? They're actually inexperienced compared to Ruby DD. Ruby DD has been through so many different international tournaments, has been playing the game for so, so long. Meanwhile, for this team, we've seen them a lot, like for, for Indonesia. Later on, we'll get to see the roster to see exactly who's playing, but again, Ruby DD, what we've seen from the previous matches as well, he just understands the timing. He he has that like kind of crazy old player instinct, you know, nice so it's something with the old yeah. players, it's something with the veterans that we have in MLBB, where they just see the game a bit differently to everybody else. I think in in Indonesia, it's it's gotta be Lemon, you know, he goes for like some wild engages, he has that vision for himself, but we're gonna take a look at Indonesia's roster as well. Yep, Boots, Albert, CW, Sands, and Keyboy. And I believe, I know this Boots has been popping up here, but it has been Luffy. Luffy playing for the lineup, you know. And um, either way, honestly, if it was Boots, I'm sure, you know, they would find some of the successes they've already had through this. And even taking it back yesterday, uh, yesterday, man, Indonesia had very strong games, very dominant games. And again, when we looked at it, it was Albert. I, I forgot what, what KDA he had. It was like 30 and something. I don't think he died, if I remember. He didn't die. He played the uh, no yeah. one. And then what did he play this? The first the link. Uh, uh, 13 the link, kills on links, 16 yeah, kills yeah. on Nolan, right? Yeah, it, it was just insane. It was nasty. So I'm wondering if this happens here. We are jumping into the draft here and if i you know if i could hit the clapping button i would i'm not <laughs> streaming my own stream so uh we're finally in the draft game number one and this is once again a match to qualify for wec you can see this myanmar is going to go ahead and take out the ling and i'm sure either they kind of build the composition around possibly picking up a, a nolan or at least one of the assassins we've seen pop up time and time again but just taking out the Ling is good enough because, man, have we seen Ken do pretty much the same, I would say yeah. almost the same performance that we saw with Albert yesterday? I think especially for, for Myanmar, right, it's about trying to force Indonesia into those utility picks for Albert because it does feel like, you know, even though Albert does pretty well as well on the utility, it's not as good as his assassins. And we get to, we got to see those assassins uh, pulled off by Albert just yesterday. <laughs> you mentioned it, the Ling and also the Nolan. Well played to him. So now with the chip and the Ling ban, that's actually an interesting first phase ban for blue side. Usually we see the chip banned out by red side, but for Indonesia, they're already really adjusting to the meta. They let the Roger go against Malaysia, and I think that will be the first and the last time Indonesia will let the Roger go if they're not on blue side. They can pick it up for themselves, obviously. Albert yeah. plays a mean Roger. Same goes for CW, but leaving it open 
I don't know about that. Uh, the Sky Piercer is still a bit too crazy. I've been spamming Roger as well. You know, if you take a look at my rank games, my match history, it's just been Roger Brody, Roger Brody. <laughs> I'm an SPA, certified you SPA. You played him in the gold lane? Yeah, yeah. I play. I still play him in the gold lane. I just wanted to see, right? Because yeah. personally, I still think he is stronger in the jungle. But in the gold lane, uh, he's actually still pretty strong. He's an absolute lane bully. You go for the Master Assassin. Um, Emblem setup as well, and it's yeah. uh, still very, very good to dominate in lane. It's gonna be the Faramis man though, so Lo Yi is up for grabs. Nolan as well, like you said earlier, Myanmar have the chance to take it away from Indonesia. If they take this away, Lo Yi being open, but I feel like so far throughout the entirety of uh, ISF, we've seen the struggle. We've seen teams make it work, and we've seen Divergence yeah. still be pretty good, but so far I feel like Lo Yi is in a weird position where she was so dominant for so long, and then now, it really seems like it takes a lot of effort for it to work in, in some of the team's lineups that I've been drafting it. So with a lot of these, I'm just wondering, Myanmar, they have a lot of opportunity to pick up a valuable first pick here, but trading it over to Indonesia as well, you know, some of the, the XP lane comes to mind, uh, like the the, the Tarizlas, the Yuzhongs, but this is going to be a Fredrin first pick for Myanmar. So this, th to me now, Fredrin is more so of like, He's still a safe option. It's just I'm wondering too, like, how do you build this up? Because we have seen now Fredrin even struggle against these lords, these lord dances, and uh, even early on. So response right now from Indonesia is going to be the Claude and the Farsa. What do you think Myanmar needs? Oh, I think right now they can go for something like a Yuzong or a Terizla, right? The Terizla would be a good pickup to deny that strong side for Indonesia to play with because technically with that Claude pick, they're already setting up for the weak side for Claude. They're setting up to go for the trio mid setup into the neutral objective battles as usual from what we've seen from most teams to take control of the early game. Uh, but another way to deal with this Farsa and the Claude could be the Yuzong, right? You can go for Terizla to deny it and maybe set yourself up for an even better neutral objective take or you can take the Yuzong to bully the Farsa. But the thing is, it almost seems like Indonesia wants that to happen. With the Farsa first pick, super easy to counter it, super easy for you to go for the Yuzong. And uh, for Myanmar, they won't take that bait. They won't actually, you know, play into what Indonesia are trying to force them or force out from Myanmar. It's going to be the Lo Yi, like we mentioned earlier still, even though it's not as prior as it used to be. It's not as crazy as it yeah. used to be. Uh, teams and players who understand uh, how to utilize the, the diversion We'll yep. still be able to get a whole lot of value with it. We've seen it multiple times, even from Sans himself. One loss, one win. For Justin, have we seen a, a Loya game for Justin? For Justin, I don't think. So. I'm not sure if we have. I was gonna yeah. pull it up while you were, this might be his we were first. talking about that. Might be his first that they they bring it to play. I'm gonna look here. Um, it looks like no. I mean, he's mostly playing like the Kadidas, the Farsas. Uh, the games they've swept. Okay, he did play Louis Ooh. once. So he did play it once. They played it against uh, an off-stream game that we didn't have on the live stream. It was against Timor Leste, uh, that nation. So they went 2-0 with that. So they, they used the, um, when they used the Loi Yi, it was with a Harith and a Ruby. Uh, and their jungler was a Baksha instead of the Frederick. And then they had the Dairoth in the XP lane. So I'm not sure if they're kind of going with that same kind of game plan but they also ended that game in under 12 minutes so now yeah you know this is indonesia that they're going against here so obviously some of this coordination that they need with this loy have to be on point i think but this is kind of the same concept already and we wait for these you know second phases of the the bands to go through here i think too because of the fact that they're going against the claude like the option is do you actually go with a traditional Marksman, because the Harith is taken out, we have seen some testing, I, I, I say experimentation, I should say, for the gold laners um, to bring something new to there. But I think if you're going against the Claude, you could just pick something a little more safe uh, if you really wanted to. The Natan would be the safe option to go for, right? You can go for the Purify, you can go for the Flicker. I think any hero in the gold lane that can have that flexibility option to go for, you know, a lot of different spells would be great in this current meta. With so much dive being placed onto you, with so much damage already as well from Poke coming in from that far set too. But they will actually ban out the Arlet last. So again, maybe setting up for uh, a Tarizla. I think 
What do you think about that Arlet ban? Because me personally, looking at the Arlet, yeah. he's kind of a hero that isn't really that strong in lane, right? Like up against the Yuzong, up against the Terizla, it's a Terizla's lane to win. It's a Yuzong's lane to win as well. But yeah. when you pair in the Arlet together with this kind of composition, it makes sense. So it's more of a synergy ban, uh, synergy deny ban, more than, you know, setting Lutpi up for success in that lane. Because if the Arlet gets to be picked up by Myanmar with the CC coming in from the Ruby, with the angles yeah. created by the Diversion as well, and obviously the CC from the Loyi and the Fredrin. Yeah, you're gonna get a, quite a bit of vengeances there, man. You know, almost um, a lot. infinity amount of uh, uh, vengeances. But it is gonna be the Edith pickup. Still a very, very big comfort pick here coming in for Keyboy. And what's great about this, uh, the fact that they picked it up in the first phase or in the first pick of the second phase is because it's a good flex pick over to Lutpi. Keyboy can play it, Lutpi can play it, both yeah. of them do really well on it and it sets up for now uh, them to get a counter matchup when, when they get to see what Myanmar go for. And also just as a note, I think this Yuzhong ban is still the, the portrait, this new portrait is for ooh, CC, ooh. I'm assuming. Okay. Uh, interesting, because as I was saying and looking at their wow. old lineup from one of the games that they swept here, the Dyroth was a part of this lineup. You know, it, the Dyroth they played last time was picked up there with the Ruby and the Loy Yi. The difference, of course, this time is they have a Mozkov, like I was saying, what is going to be that good matchup for the Claude in lane. At least with the Mozkov, you, you should be relatively okay to farm up pretty well. And yeah. you know that Claude uh, overall presence in the game Farms lanes really quickly, like later on, using the Blazing Duet and can join fights. So why not pick Mozkov so at least you have the Spear of Destruction. You can hang out in the lane a little bit longer if you want to. And hopefully, you know, hopefully you'll land the Spear of Destruction. You can follow up with it. I think part of that too is, oh, if they follow up with the Mozkov, they set up really well with the armor penetration from a Dyroth. But look at this, the Masha comes through and we've seen teams i think even malaysia banned malaysia banned Masha it twice against indonesia because they know they know that it is devastating oh. here in the hands of lutfi especially with the sky piercer we were talking about abusing the sky piercer on the roger on the brody but i thunder think if, pierce. if you think sky piercer right thunder pierce definitely <laughs> comes to mind you know there's already a sky built there you know they are the sky kings that's what we call them in indonesia and uh, you know you get the thunder clap with your ultimate masha fits to that, you know, Sky Piercer category so, so well. And I'm really interested to see how Lutpi plays this Masha because it's so weird for Lutpi. We didn't get to see it for the most part in the regular season of MPL Indonesia. And we didn't even get to see it for the most part in the playoffs. He started picking it up after losing to Luke, uh, you know, an opponent of his who plays the Masha a whole lot. So the fact that Lutpi, now he's added a hero that he wasn't <laughs> comfortable on to his arsenal and making it a prio pick for himself, making it a power pick. It's really impressive. Well, we're going to find out here, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the match. It's a best of three between Myanmar and Indonesia to secure a slot. The first one to the grand final, of course, later on, but more so for the WEC in Riyadh for 2024. It starts here in this best of three. We saw both lineups. We talked about it quite extensively. And once we get a look also at the emblems, I'm not sure if anything stuck out just yet. It is Ken rolling with the Impure Rage. I like the fact that Fredrin is still versatile enough to pick like three different emblem Ooh. sets, maybe four, you know, uh, and, and kind of play around with that. Also, there's a whole lot of um, lethal ignitions here. Zidez is also using the Brave Smite. We've seen this plenty of times with Ruby. And even on the other side, nothing too crazy uh, from this. Luffy does have the lethal ignition himself. So we'll see how this kind of new signature pick, I guess you could say, it's like a new pick in his repertoire to make work because he's yep. dealt with it so many times over in Indonesia uh, against his other opponents. So it makes me really wonder too how this is going to work in the grander scheme of things, these later team fights when we're talking about especially the Sky Piercer being built and online. And so for now, neither teams are really going to be pushing the the momentum just yet. I think with these lineups for both of them, you just want to wait for the turtle, but it looks like Albert, we're going to go in, but just visiting, you know? I mean, really, you can't get this kill that you're looking for, but everybody needs to get these level fours before this fight does become, uh, before it does break out for that first turtle. So right now, he's still waiting for his last enemy minion to go ahead and just look at the attention here. They might try to go for something, you know, try to, try to pull like a, a cheeky move up top, but it turtles up. 
And with that, Ruby DD doesn't have the level four just yet, so they'll wait. Sans also so waiting, so it's up to Ken. Go ahead and stall out that turtle, start it up. But look at Indonesia also getting in position here. From Myanmar so far, Ken holding on to that turtle. Albert pops in a shield unity keyboard, looking for an angle now of that onward. You can see that Albert will go for the shield unity onto Zide. Let's give me the feather airstrike as well as well as the onward to get a claim for his blood. Albert winning out the retry battle, but in the back it's gonna be Ruby DD who claims the kill on the Sans. But Luffy flickers forward now and just goes in for the last two scratches to get the trade in favor of Indonesia. Keyboy continuing with the onward and the Earth Shatter, knocking Ken up, doing some damage, and he does have the primal wrath, so he can try to go for a little bit more damage. It is going to be the Praiser's Wrath forcing him out. He will be able to onward backwards again, just buying some time. Finally, gets that Primal Wrath off. But yeah, early on, a win for Indo. Yep, Keyboy knew. You know, he's like, I can stay here and just be annoying for a while because I have Primal Wrath. And yeah, they came out on top of that whole exchange. Oh, mid lane. Great pick off on the Sans by Zide with the flicker into the I'm offended straight into the follow up coming in from Myanmar. Well played to equalize the kills on the board. Diversion into the bottom lane. Oh. Doesn't have the I'm offended though. So really no threat of taking CW down. Not just yet. Yeah, it was a good idea. Like send the package, you know, type thing. Here we go. I was going to talk about the items because that whole exchange, how it happened. We might not get a chance though. Earth Shatter. Onward not connecting earlier. Shield you need to lock her down. Dozide to be able to pop in. I'm offended, but will fall to the Poissons as Juno in the bottom lane will still be able to use the Abyss Walker and the Spear of Destruction as well to try to defend and clear out of uh, these minion waves from pushing into that turret. Okay. Hmm. Uh, you know, I, I wanted to get a chance to talk about the items, but it looks like Indonesia just wants to keep fighting. Another Feather Airstrike, no Thunderclap just yet. Look, he decides to use it to try to go for that Execute, and Sans will still be able to claim that kill up top. All right, so Indonesia finding picks where they can. It might They might just Ooh. go for another. Juno is going to be fine. Gets out of there with a walker. But so this is the thing, man. Like with the lead that Indonesia has gotten themselves. Oh, no, Albert, is he going to be in trouble? Taking a whole lot of damage, a chain CC as well, but a good earth shatter from Keyboy now to go for the re-engage. Sans follows up as well. That's gonna be a blazing duet from CW as he pops in a purify to get out of the dispersion CC and now goes back to the battle mirror image onto the turtle. Second turtle of the game, Albert on a diversion. Oh. Trying to give Ken a little bit of an angle, spear of destruction, but Albert just secures it with a retribution. CW, no purify, going to be caught in the flanks and Myanmar will be able to get a trade off for that turtle. It's a kill onto the gold lane. Okay, maybe we get a chance now. Let's look at it real quick before Ken starts a fight. But first item's kind of falling into place already. You got a Corrosion Scythe here for Juno. He's gonna need a little more time to build up because the same thing is there for CW and he's on to his second item. With that too, Sky Piercer are already being locked in for Loopy. That, that first item, that rush, is exactly yeah. what we were thinking about for the Masha and that can be quite devastating. You got the wings already picked up by Sans helps with that little bit of shielding and a little bit more mobility that already Farsa has a ton of. So wow. with this, you know, these this early game kind of advantage that Indonesia was able to get themselves gives them this upper hand, plus the defensive items they've already locked in, still looking to get some of these first ones locked in. Oh, Albert, this is what I'm saying. He's quite tanky, even with the Baksha. So the classic matchup between the Fredrin. What? Oh, wow, Loopy. That's we the were Thunderclap Pierce. We were talking about the Sky Piercer, the Thunder Pierce, we might as well call it now with how he's able to utilize the Masha. But remember, during the rosters, you know, when we're talking, uh, looking at the lineups, we were talking about how Ruby DD has so much more experience compared to some of the members from Indonesia, and especially his lane opponent. Lupi's a rookie in MPL ID in Indonesia, and he just got a solo kill against a legend. Man, right now, uh, they're just playing with the, these timings that they have on, on you know, especially the different lanes, but Loopy, especially with that Sky Piercer, like we were talking about, you know, and, and we know. Hold on, Keyboy Diversion? Okay, it's gonna be Keyboy caught in, and that's gonna be everything. And a kitchen sink, Keyboy! So able to flicker out to safety, but the Spirit of Destruction and the follow up from Ruby DD as he flickers in will be able to catch Keyboy and take him down in the sixth minute of the game. Straight for the turtle, the final one of this game to spawn back into the land of dawn. Straight onto it, though, it's gonna be Cannon Ruby DD. Albert is looking for an angle to perhaps go for it. Pops into Poissons, hovers over the turtle, goes in for the retribution, but it's still gonna be Ken who wins it out in the end. And that's the first. 
Turtle on the board for Myanmar. Technically, shield unity for the airstrike. Catching Zide as he flickers out with the Don't Run Wolf King. CW jumps in with the laser. Oh. It's Carbon Ammo Fender, but will be able to take him down as he goes back towards that battle mirror image. Looking for the flicker only onto the wall. They'll lose that one HP bar and gets the reset on the Thunderclap, but is not in range to go for that Thunderclap. Oh. Now, another diversion. Lupi going to be caught by the taunt again. Lupi taunted it up and locked down by the Spear of Misery. It's Justin gets rid of him. That's going to be a good dodge by Keyboy. Sidestepping away from the Praiser's Rattles. Now, it's going to be the re engage coming down onto me. Myanmar can look for the damage, but Keyboy will out sustain the Fredrin. And the Feather Airstrike gets popped in. The last one doesn't connect, but the Flicker does. Gila <laughs> Sans continuing on the Farsa. Oh my goodness. I, you know, I think that's all it's going to be is just clash after clash and team fights because so far. That's what both these teams have wanted to do. And actually, when you watch them through the group stage and we talked about exactly how this new patch, these new items has changed the course of the game, this this is the highlight. Like these are the ways, the play styles that these teams have. They've known, they've been known for before, and now it's even more so. And Albert gonna battle out with Ken, and it looks like they're gonna go for it. Yeah, Albert did actually steal that away. Another feather airstrike as well. Ruby DD gonna be knocked up by Keyboy. And just with those shields thrown out, Albert will be able to take him down. In the mid lane, Team Lutti wanted to go for you know, that turret. CW will be able to get the tier two up top for free, however. No, not for free. Juno, good maneuvers to look for trades on the map. Wow. Okay. So again, Indonesia will still hold on to the lead that they've got themselves up to this point. They are furthering it a little bit more. And even when Myanmar, they've been making actually pretty good positioning uh, plays with Justin utilizing that diversion. It's just unfortunate because they're kind of you know, the, the, the item disparity or the economy lack here is really what's showing in some of these skirmishes and team fights. And so as they get ready for this Lord here, I think it's still a little tough for Myanmar to actually approach this fight because they're outgunned and out itemed. Even with a good diversion play, if they can catch out a key target, which could be Sans, could be CW, then they might have the upper hand. Then they have to deal with loot B, especially on this Masha, like we said, with the Sky Piercer already and other items locked in. So with that, Myanmar will actually go ahead and try to dance this off, it looks like. But even with Keyboy, early immortality picked up. He has the Primal Wrath still available as well. The placement and positioning here for Indonesia is really what's going to kind of set this apart. And that with the lead they have, look how front forward they can be. They can actually dominate this side of this Lord, zoning out the members of Myanmar. You have to wait because Ruby DD, where is he going to enter from? But fourth of the health. Ken's all alone, chain CC'd, Albert gonna be able to pick up the Lord for free, Ken gonna be melted down, Lippy walking forward, CW with a battle mirror image aggressively as well to the front, but Indonesia will just be happy with that trade, no contest for Myanmar. Okay, no contest for that one, again, this is what I was saying, I think it'd be difficult for them to really contest that first Lord or even fight that fight, but you know, the way that they come back into this game, even given the fact that 4,000 lead for Indonesia is really utilizing that version like they have. They've had some pretty good plays, but also Juno. Great thing Juno hasn't died yet. He hasn't gone down. He's been able to farm up pretty well. He's got the three items. He's got the DHS, the Corrosive Scythe. He's got the Golden Staff. So he should be able to pump out pretty good damage. Might work on that Wind of Nature next for a little defense. And he's going to be a key component in winning some of these fights. Not only that, but if Ruby DD can get the setup that he's looking for with this Dyroth Wait. pick, penetrate that armor and set things up here. What do you see? Wait, did, did Albert just accidentally get two Sky Guardian helmets? I think he did, and he just sold the Sky Guardian helmet to buy another Ares belt. I think that might have been a mistake, man, and that's actually quite a costly one. It's I don't costly. know if it's a visual bug or if it actually is true that he sold the Sky Guardian helmet because I saw him pick it up, and yeah. there was two in the inventory. Juno doing a good job of clearing up top lane now. CW gets rid of the tier 2 in the mid lane as Lutpi as well. Tries to do the same thing, but towards the tier 2 in the bottom lane. CW with a battle mirror image. Towards the front, trying to go for some damage onto Ken, but he will still be able to utilize that turret splash to clear out the waves. And it seems for Indonesia, they want to get rid of all the turrets, all the base turret splashes with the First Lord. Yeah, that's probably the best that they can do for now. Wow. Even with the lead that they have, they still have to respect the fact that, like I said, setup potential from Myanmar is actually pretty good. And Juno hasn't died. And because he has the three items that he really needs to lock in, he doesn't have to worry so much about having the Wind of Nature just yet, as long as they're on the defense. Once they start kind of pressing forward a little bit, Obviously, Juno's going to want some of that defensive, but he's all right now. He's oh, hold on. Ken should be fine. Gets thrown up into the air. This is all the battle for the orange, though. 
Okay, that should show you it as well. Now into the Earth Shatter as he gets the stun down. Ken will be knocked back again with Onward. They go for a flying off the sound, but he's still able to survive right now. The Feather Airstrike popped in, but gets caught by the Petrify. As they look for Justin now, who's going to be completely isolated. Lippy with another Thunderclap. And you might as well call it the Thunder Piercer because that's what it is on the Masha. Your HP bar just disappears whenever he goes for that Thunderclap. Albert and Keyboy zoning Zida and Ruby DD. None of the backliners alive for Myanmar. Indonesia can go for the end right now. Battle Mirror Image. That's going to be the onward to cancel out any Ooh. sort of re-engage from Zide. Ruby DD all alone. They're going to go straight for it. Lucky again with the Thunderclap and the Sky Piercer to assassinate Ruby DD to claim game number one for Indonesia. Man, oh man. I, I jokingly called it the Thunder Pierce in the draft. Turns out you're right. <laughs> that was exactly what it was, bro. Like, my goodness, does that combination work out so well? I This was great to see. It was very enjoying to see that on the Masha. I just don't know how long we're going to be able to enjoy this. Like, I feel like there's some <laughs> changes coming up with the Sky Pierce. I man. feel there's going to be a hot fix. I feel like there's going to be a hot fix, too. There has to be because like, so maybe far... Maybe just tomorrow. Maybe, maybe, because <laughs> my goodness. And at the same time, when this was locked in, I think even you for your for yourself, like you yeah. know this very well. You know, you knew that this was gonna be a good game here for Loot B on this Masha pick, and it proved it. And it was very difficult for Ruby DD to do anything on the Dyroth. You know, we're gonna look at the highlights here in just a second, but You'll see what I'm talking about. Indonesia also did a really good job at just starting a, a little bit slow in the early game. But once they got to the objectives and they controlled this portion of the game, it was they didn't they never let go. I mean, even with this exchange, you're already seeing Loopy start this road to domination on the Masha. And, you know, it was good, good attempts, good plays from Myanmar in the early game, trying to utilize the diversion, utilize the fact that they have a ton of CC with Zidez on this Ruby pick. But I think overall, just the amount of plays that Indonesia was able to make quickly across the map and not have a Louis on their side was a really telling tell for them. I mean, even this, like I said, burst damage whenever you have the Farsa locked in is crazy already early game because you don't really have the defensive magic items that you need to deal with a feathered airstrike. You throw in the Masha on top of it and it gets super tough to deal with in terms of surviving that this was a great diversion by the way i like to i like to see that use but then again even with it they do get cw but still the fight that's it that's all they could that's all they could do they get one body look at this look at the damage this is what we're talking about ruby dd gets chased down here's loopy boom nine 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 sky piercer thunderclap right so with that like i said diversions were pretty good for myanmar but once that's gone then what is your next play if you're Myanmar? Are you able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the lead that Indonesia was having? Because even at this point in the game, seven minutes in, it was nothing crazy. The lead wasn't anything out of control just yet. But with punishing plays like this and good just timing from, you know, ultimates like the Blazing Duet, the Feathered Airstrike, and even just the setup potential from Indonesia's lineup really helped them out. Myanmar was in this game, I would say, even at this point in the, at this point in the game, but slowly but surely it slipped out of their hands. And when we get to eventually that first Lord, that's really where it got just kind of snowballed in, in favor of Indonesia. Great flicker play from Sans, very, you know, key style of him to do on this far. So like I said, he's picked it up a couple times to the group stages and has had phenomenal performances so far. And even Albert, Albert on this box show almost played like an assassin. He was everywhere. Whether he got two guardian helmets or not, he was everywhere he needed to be on the box show, played it very well. And this is what you want to do when you see a Fredrin across from you. The Fredrin was first pick for Myanmar. And they played into it really well by just picking up a Baksha. Nothing too fancy. Honestly, when you look at this game, Indonesia didn't do anything too fancy. It was very foundational skills. The Masha was probably the most fancy thing about it just because it's such a glass cannon, you know, and with the Sky Piercer Rush. But everything was very fundamental here from Indonesia, and it got them that win in a very quick fashion. 12.30 on this, and with a pretty big lead, too. And things kind of, like I said, with the draft they had, it just fell into place for them really well here. The damage that you got to see just pumped out from Lutby, an XP laner on a Masha, is what makes it so scary. Like, Lutby out-damaged the gold lane and the mid lane. 
that's probably why you know some people are like hey take out this masho especially when you're facing against indonesia very very strong performance here from lupi and just overall from indonesia as a team myanmar is really gonna have to kind of get things as situated and figure it out for the next draft as you know we're most likely going to see them get those two picks they're looking for based off the priority pick for indonesia when they flip sides and everything and they can really start from there because I don't know, the Dyroth just ended up not working. I feel like the way they wanted to, or Masha was just the perfect answer to kind of deal with it. Uh, the rest of the lineup for Myanmar I actually really liked. It's just, uh, by the time the game got to this point, 12 minutes in, Juno couldn't shine the way he has before, like we've seen on a Natan. That's why I think the Natan ban was also very good and it was on point. Yeah, respect, right? I think uh, the Natan was just, it, it makes a whole lot of sense, you know, the fact that at least for Myanmar, they've been able to get all of their wins with the Natan, even up against Cambodia, if it wasn't a Natan in game number one, game number three, when they actually went for a clot in game number two against Cambodia, that was the game that they actually lost. So maybe that is a bit of uh, what, uh, maybe for the side of Myanmar that Indonesia were able to exploit. They forced the marksman to be picked up in the second phase and then they banned out in the ton, banning out that signature pick. And like you said, Albert, he's a tank. He's a mm -hmm. Baksha, but the Baksha can deal a whole lot of damage. We've, we've already been talking about this all the way from the African regional qualifiers, how broken this hero is. And even, you know, some pro players deciding, even though he's the only magic damage dealer on the opposing team, sometimes they would even still go for the Radiant Armor, for the Athena Shield as well. Uh, you know, some of these just to try to take in and soak in the damage yeah. that comes in from the poissons from his constant skill twos and even the shield unity the base damage alone with the help of the concussive blast it lets you become a fighter and yeah. a tank at the same time and i again want to want to see if he actually did go for the two sky guardian helmets if that was actually a mistake that he made because it looked like you know for for a dominating game for indonesia it looked like he he shouldn't have just three items he should have way more or at least one more yeah. item so I think that might have been like a real mistake that he did. I was trying to I was trying to actually go back in the stream and see like what what it was that he did, but uh, I think the fact that I mean it was a twelve and a half minute game, but yeah, because he only had like a couple items there on the box and they were like pretty massively ahead. I think it was a mistake because um, you know then once you once you buy it and then you have to sell it. You lose quite a bit of gold, you know, in that exchange. So, uh, but either way, like I said, for for Albert specifically here, what we've seen from the group stage is just again a very dynamic player. Not only is he dynamic in game, but he spoke pure English yesterday in the interview, which still I was like, man, that's dynamics right there. So, you know, he's played these uh, assassin picks where he's gone like sixteen and zero. And now he plays the box show like this too. And I think it was the perfect fit for this lineup because you're just you're just letting the other lanes really shine with this. Like they're the ones to do the damage. You're not the assassin anymore. Uh, and that showed because loot be shining on the damage department, you know, in terms of like, even against a Claude and a, like a, like a Claude, okay. Cause Claude takes a little more time to build up and get the blazing duet off. But like even to out damage a Farsa, like that, that was a surprise to me. And I think it just uh, shows how dominant loot be was on the Masha pick. So I'm almost expecting as we wait for the draft for game two, they, Myanmar will ban out the Masha. They don't want to deal with it. Maybe this is the time too. Like, and they'll probably respect ban Ling still. Um, but I could also just see Indonesia putting an assassin this time if they want to on Albert. Let him have his game now that he's had this Baksha, you know, this Baksha game in the game number one. And then kind of build from that because uh, I, I feel like too, depending on how the bans go, priority wise could still be up in the air. So far, man. And it's like, even when I watch the Lu Yi, it's, she's struggling. And I don't know why the diversions were good, but why is Lu Yi not winning games? Not just here for Myanmar, but like multiple teams. I feel like she's really struggling. And so I don't know if it's the, the just the diversion alone. There's something has happened here, America. I'm not sure what it is, but uh, I think she's, she's still good and teams will still pick her up. There's definitely something happening with the Lu Yi. She's definitely been capped. I think she's definitely just been limited down, right? Because the fact that her ultimate now, the diversion, has been increased, I think it's too, like, a, you know, it's quite long, actually, especially for stage one, right? When you've just leveled it up level one, it just, yeah. oh man, that duration for the cooldown is a bit too long. And you can see that for Lo Yi, at least, what made her really strong, on top of obviously having crazy base damage, like you mentioned, that is still why she can actually still be picked in the first phase.
That's the only reason. Because if it's purely just for the diversion, if let's say she's a late game pick, she's not going to be picked up at all, all right? <laughs> she already has that snowballing potential. And even with the diversion getting nerfed, you can still deal a lot of damage. But when the opposing team is able to just weather the storm of that early game damage and also yeah. weed out the diversions, that's when you have a big problem. For most of the teams that have been, you know, even trying out the low Yees, it's still been coming back to hurt them. Indonesia tried to play that against Malaysia. And again, Malaysia were able to weather out the storm in the early game up against that low Yi. And also, they were able to catch all of the diversions. The diversions won't be as creative as they used to be because now you can't take those crazy risks anymore. I think we saw for, a, I think in that game as well, uh, Justin used the diversion in towards like the, the bush right in front of the purple ball. Yeah. Do you remember that? And yep. right as they saw that, they were like, all right, let's go for the Lord. They yeah. knew that there was no way for the diversion to be up again within the time span of them taking the Lord. So that in itself is already a big weakness that a lot of teams can exploit for the Loyi. You can't even faint anymore. You can't do that anymore because it's just so readable now. And uh, back to your point where you actually were talking about the Masha, I would love to see the Masha banned out too, especially against Lutpi. But the thing is, they're going to have to ban it out in the second phase, I feel. Because in the first phase, it's a Ling, Chip, and Angela. Those are the three bans yeah. that Myanmar went for. And now, especially considering Indonesia will most likely be on blue. Not sure, again, if the, this is actually going to be the case, right? But even if they stay red, I think it'll still be the same bans. It'll still be Ling, it'll still be Chip, and Angela. Those three heroes are just so good for Indonesia. And you really, really can't afford to, ta or to give it away to them. One way I see it, like the Masha fit in the first phase is yeah. through Ken picking up the Ling or through them going for the chip. They need to pick what they banned out in the first game if they want to go and, you know, uh, let go of one slot to go and replace it for a Masha ban. But the safe choice would be, hey, Lutpi picked it up in the second phase. He's never picked it up in the first phase, at least not yet. You, you can play that gamble, hope that it doesn't get picked in the first phase and maybe ban it out in the second phase. But then if it does get picked up in the first phase, we got to start thinking about counters here. The Dairoth yeah. was not it. The Dairoth was not a lane that does well against the Masha. At least not there. I don't know if it was the execution or if it just fundamentally loses up in the matchup. The the I, I'm, I was trying to think because after you mentioned it, I was like, you know, I think there was a point when Masha was for some teams, like in different professional leagues, like it was picked up first pick. Like there was a time when it did happen when she started to rise again uh, through the ranks and it was either she was flexed as even a roam or she was put in the XP lane. Um, this time around though, it is gonna be Indonesia on this blue side and then you'll have Myanmar on the red side. And I know, you know, uh, for Indonesia, like you said, the these bands are Quite similar. Angela is actually going to be taken out by them, the Fermis as well. There's the Ling, the respect. So, you know, I think it's up really up to Myanmar. Like, how do they want to go about that first phase for themselves, depending on what's given up here? And Indonesia, they can really go a couple different different ways. Like, they could go in priority an assassin pick early off the bat. They don't have to. They could also uh, something that's happened with a lot of the games for Indonesia, and I think is a big part of the, the like drafting phase is the fact that you have quite a bit of flexibility with Keyboy. Keyboy, if you look at the the heroes that he's played so far, even through the group stage, like he he's phenomenal on the Edith. Like we've already seen that. But he's yesterday, was it yesterday? Yesterday he even picked up the Guinevere Rome. You know, and how many massive plays did he make on the Guinevere Rome? So you know when you have roamers like this on certain teams, it's it's difficult to go through the draft and really you kind of just have to pick your poison when it comes to, you know, these bands and what you're willing to give up because you can only have so many bands. And that that's the R lot that is going to be taken out here um, for the last ban for the first phase from Indonesia. Myanmar, we'll see what they answer with. Again, there's a whole lot on the table. I think even lately, we've seen so many contests for the Edith pickup from men's and women's. And Edith alone as a hero is probably one of the more successful roams right now setting up for team i would say in in well the, for indonesia at least the grok we saw this ban wow. out before but wow it's the louis Yi. so me yeah. took the task of banning out the chip and the louis Yi. and so the response is a harith over here they let the harith go and technically they also leave the roger go so i honestly with the louis Yi ban it makes sense i was about to say you know uh, before they actually banned the louis Yi, that the harith and roger will definitely be something in their minds but 
letting go of both will be great for them because then they can actually just decide to react to the pick whichever you know indonesia go for if they go for the roger first myanmar will react with a Harith. if roger it's or if Harith gets picked up they'll go with the roger so vice versa we'll see now myanmar i think one slot will definitely be used for the roger but now that okay. the is picked up if they okay they do go for okay. the roger but now technically it already kind of deletes that flex potential from the game roger won't be going into the jungle unless the fredrin goes xp and i gotta be honest with you naisu i am a fredrin xp hater i am the number one fredrin xp <laughs> hater right why i i just hate how you know how like you know in the xp you want to go for brawls the yeah. fredrin's like a nah I'll just nah. I don't want to. Nah. nah. Yeah. She, he just, just wants nah. us the same. Nah, I'd win. Nolan picked though. <laughs> nah, I'd win, but you know he eventually just he never wins, but he never loses. He's just a non-lane. Yeah. It's <laughs> the a dead like lane. picked as well. And the Nolan, the Nolan's gonna be a great pick here. If the Frigid does go for the uh, tours, the jungle. This is what Indonesia have been able to utilize. I think yesterday as well, the multiple layers of damage and uh, the versatility that you get with the Nolan and the. Harith, you can go back and forth. You can also still kite, but obviously the number one way to win with this composition is go for the initial burst, lock them down, and burst them yeah. down on the spot. Man, I'm glad you pointed that too, out too, because I'm, I'm also wondering like if Myanmar picked up the Fredrin <clears throat> like a little bit early here, but you know, because you already know where things are going into place. Okay, Tigreal is what they grab up. I would like to see Great them pick. ban out Guinevere. I, I don't know if it's actually worth a ban for Myanmar, but this lineup, when we it saw is. at least the Harith and Nolan, the Guinevere was for Keyboy. And that was what helped, like, the, the setups with just having a Guinevere for those two heroes alone. And now you have a penalty zone. It was, it was nasty, man. So I feel like for Myanmar, I might think about banning out the Guinevere, letting that be one of the bans here. But, you know, at least they answer it. Hey, they have a Tigreal, pretty good implosion setups that can happen with this lineup, especially when you're fighting into a possible penalty zone, being initi the initiation. You know, that happens a lot of times so far from when we see Teresa's locked in. It's just, uh, you want to be able to fight into that because that's going to be a Zaman Force also being dropped down. So they do go with a Rome ban, but it's going to be a Grok instead. And so far, like I was saying before, I think, you know, Keyboy's versus utility as a player and his hero pool is kind of what makes this lineup so strong or just keyboy so strong in general is the fact that you can you can ban out some of the key heroes he pick, he picks but then he kind of just like curveballs and picks a guinevere who there are not many roams that are actually confident enough to pick a guinevere and then play it to the way that he did like especially yesterday so now for Indonesia, on the other hand, what do they want to ban out here? You know, some mages, some more mages maybe they could take out, you know, for the mid lane being an option. Um, wow, a Paquito? Not expecting that because, man, we have not seen much Paquito throughout this entire ISF run. Not at all. I don't think we've seen a single Paquito game in the entire ISF for African regional qualifiers combined with yeah. the Asian regional qualifiers. So He popped up in women's today. I remember watching ah, uh, Eternal Rashi. Okay. He just popped up once. So that's like, I think the first time, man. Yeah, the fact that it's only popped up once, right? Means that, I don't know I don't know about the Paquito. Maybe in these matchups up against the Yuzong, the Terizlas, you know, the two super prio heroes, it just doesn't do too well. Or maybe it's just because now you're kind of forced to commit into these team fights, not so much play the Lord Dance anymore, right? But for Myanmar, like you said, I, I completely agree with you, by the way. The Guinevere makes perfect sense for Indonesia. It's, there's so much value here. Number one, you get the Violet Requiem. That in itself is already yep. an anti-CC that you can utilize to get out of these engages coming in from the Tigreal. They actually go for the Masha ban as well. So two XP bans towards Ruby DD. A lot of respect plays down as they've already revealed their own XP lane with the Terizla. But another reason why the... Well, actually... The, uh, the other two reasons why it's great is because, yeah, number one, or number two, actually, the number one we already got earlier, is it is a great, great lockdown hero, a good setter to set up for the Nolan and the Herod damage to come through, and to even set up for the penalty zone to just find an, a more reliable hit. Yeah. But then the final reason has got to be the Fredrin. I think back then when Fredrin was ultra meta, the way that you would actually try to counter it in the jungle would be the Guinevere. The Guinevere will be a solid answer to go for the Retreat Battles because you could, you could actually just go away with the Spatial Migration, get the stun, and it kind of works in a way uh, similar to the Akai. You CC your opponent to get a 100-0 Retreat to win out in the Retreat Battle. And because of the range changes, now the Guinevere we don't see too much in the jungle, but I think for Keyboy, you can still make it work. It's a good Novaria pick though. I think that uh, will 
kind of stop and give uh, the Guinevere a hurdle if they do still decide to go for the Guinevere. Because on the Guinevere, you're very reliant on these ambushing attacks. You need to play outside of the vision, right? You have to play within the pockets yeah. there, uh, back and forth. Because if you get red out, it's pretty easy to predict, you know, a spatial migration coming in from a Guinevere. You can see it in their eyes, almost. <laughs> you can see it in their eyes if you were in the first person view in the, in the Land of Dawn, you know? There it is! I was saying, you know, uh, we saw this iteration already, these combination of heroes with some minor changes. Instead of the Terizla yesterday, it was an Arlot. And instead of the Valentina, yes, it was a Loi Yi. Uh, Loi Yi was actually picked up. So, you know, the, the core three there, though, that made it so deadly was the Guinevere, the Nolan, for the most part. Like, early game uh, snowball potential is really there. So I think for Myanmar, as they go for their last pick, they really need to have a kind of a plan in mind. It's going to be the XP lane, unless this is a crazy flex with a Fredrin. Not sure if that's going to happen, though. But the Yuzhong is open. Um, not sure if they actually want to do that or maybe possibly go with something we haven't seen yet. I'm just assuming, you know, they go Yuzhong because that's Yuzhong and Terizla matchup we've seen so many times um, throughout the ISF groups. And they go Cho. Okay. So they go the Cho pick. Which you're gonna put in the XP lane? How do you? What do you think? Do you, you think that's good? Do you think this is a good choice? We did see the Cho yesterday, right? I believe Myanmar versus Thailand. Uh, Ruby DD actually did play the Cho in the XP. Yeah. So technically, we've already seen that before. He was also able to win, but I was against Thailand. And now against this composition, there's so much anti CC, so many dashes. I guess the one member you can go for the pickoffs on would be the Nolan. Right now, with the Fracture also, no more, you know, uh, CC immunity, no more kind of built-in Purify with the Fracture. So technically, I see the idea. And especially now that the Cho has been buffed in a way where in the lane, he actually does a lot more damage. That passive yeah, has the uh, physical defense shreds. Um, it'll work towards the Roger as well later on in the game. And if you go for these pickoffs, and with the Jeet Do, it allows you to go for the trades a bit more reliably now compared to before when it was a bit shorter. But... I'm not a big fan of the Cho in the XP. I think you all know why. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's find out here. Ladies and gentlemen, it's game number two. Match point for Indonesia to move forward and advance to qualifying for the WEC in Rion. All they need is this one win to move forward. Myanmar, can they extend the series to get to the three game? We're going to have to take a look at this exactly because... Yeah, like we said, there's a whole lot of purifies here to deal with a lot of the CC that Myanmar has available to them. And look at this already early rotations happening here for Juno. But, you know, one thing too, I, I'm not sure if anyone's going to get a kill with this early on with this lineup, but with Ruby DD running, like you said, this kind of new Cho, having that passive, it's I think it's like 180% is what yep. you get with that bonus attack. But then you have a concussive blast. So I'm, I'm wondering how the lineup or how the matchup with even going against a Terizla performs in terms of like the numbers and being able to stay, or is it just purely, I'm going to go and try to get some pickoffs, you know, because right now they're just duking it out. And you can see Lutby also went up with the Brave Smite. So once he goes with uh, War Axe, most likely he'll be able to just kind of stay in the lane as long as he wants to. So on mid lane, still Albert trying to find uh, early pickoffs, but I just don't think it's going to happen here until these level fours, especially that turtle still 30 seconds away. But look at this, Ken fighting for his own XP, and Albert will go ahead and just continue on with this. I think, uh, you know, with Braves, I hold on. Down below, Lycan Pounce, Juno going to be caught in the Spatial Migration as well. Does have the Purify to get out, but the damage is certainly there. And Juno will have to respect it by backing away. But back to the Brave Smite. So most Terizlas that we've seen, especially with the War Axe change, they go for the Impure Rage to get more mana, and then they just go and rely on the sustainability of the War Axe. So the fact that he's doubling down means he's ready for Myanmar's... <laughs> You know, full-on team fight and the longer team fights. As Albert starts his turtle, Keyboy's hovering over, doesn't have that level four just yet, but has already been able to shove in that bottom lane or that mid lane actually. Oh. Good actual echo. And that's giving the spatial migration. Albert with the fracture. Not even well, actually will be able to go for it. Now penalty zone locking him down with the violent requiem. Albert picking up the first blood as Zide will be forced to run away. Oof. But even then, the retribution slows him down, gives Albert the movement speed to catch back up and to take him out. A 2-0 start for Indonesia. Man, this is what I was saying even yesterday, Mirko. Like, once Albert gets snowballing on any of the assassins that he picks up, 
he's going to continue to just be very aggressive. So you got to be, if you're Myanmar, you got to be able to answer this. And that might just be also protecting Ken a little bit more because that pressure could get a little overwhelming. You're seeing nothing locked in first item wise yet for both teams, but Indonesia getting themselves already 2K ahead against Myanmar with all those exchanges is where they usually start their games. It starts a little bit slower, they get the advantage going, and then it snowballs out of control. We saw this the last time, like I said, continuously with this lineup, these three heroes, the uh, Keyboy on that Guinevere, you have Albert on the Nolan, and of course the CW on the Harith. There's a ton of damage potential that can happen here early on. And, and for Myanmar, they have tanky enough heroes. But, you know, that's kind of what they're hoping for, that we're just tanky and durable enough to deal with the burst damage that can come through. I mean, even look at this. Ken, facial migration again with the Violet Rep Group straight into the Fracture, and Zide will be able to get the implosion down. Sans, an implosion as well, not connecting to anyone, but Zide will still be melted down slowly, but surely for Albert to pick up a killing spree in the first three minutes of the game. Deja vu to game one yesterday, or game two. Yeah. You see what I'm saying though? Like, like Myanmar, they drafted this because they're like, I hope we're tanky enough to go and deal with this burst, but it's just showing that they're not. And a lot of that has to do with the way Indonesia is cycling through their CC. And that's whether, and we talked about this extensively in the draft that Keyboy was probably gonna pick up the Guinevere and I'm surprised that it actually wasn't banned out for the last ban from Myanmar because it works wonders with this lineup. So now that this turtle's up here, Myanmar, despite them being down already, you know, three, 4,000 gold, they do still want to fight for this objective. And as long as they at least, you know, watch out for Keyboy setting up just like that, that's good. They don't get set up. So at least, you know, they, they avoid it for now, but still they have to win this battle. Es Echo going to be dropped down too. They get the vision, but still both teams are ready to go for it. It's going to be a full on fight. The penalty zone onto Ken now with the implosion as well. Locking him down. Loopy dealing a lot of damage. Ken will be taken out with just with the hammer swings as CW jumps with the synchro vision and Albert gets rid of the frontliners. Juno completely zoned away. They're being overwhelmed by damage. Another spatial migration into the violent requiem. Keyboy finding an angle to attack again, and Justin doesn't have mana to play with. Oh no, no, Azure Recall means that Albert can just walk up fracture. And now the lethal ignition taking down slowly, but surely Albert fade away kill under the tier two as he now goes for the steal. I don't think he'll be able to do so. Ken has the retribution. But man, Albert's already three levels ahead. Oh, awesome. We're going to take a look at this replay here on how this kind of unfolded. And like I was saying, you know, Myanmar, I'm surprised they really do want to go and fight for this because, wow, that's all in reverse, by the way. So it's all in reverse, I think. But, dynamics, bro. Uh, dynamics, the dynamics. But, you know, as we saw that, as we saw that unfold, it was Myanmar just choosing to fight for that. And honestly, it didn't work out for them the way they wanted it to. And Albert also, with that whole exchange, now picks up the Sky Piercer. Look at Keyboy. Like, this is just how confident Keyboy is with this Guinevere. Given the information, he's the walking ward. Facial migration only onto the orange buff. Albert decides to just take it away from Ken. Being four levels ahead, it does, you know, look quite easy to go for these steals. But, man, the fact that he was... What is up with Albert on the Assassins? It just... Do you remember last game? You know, he played the Baksha. It looked like, okay, he's good. But on the Assassins, it's, it's a different level entirely. Ruby DD. No, I don't think you can really even go for this. Luffy gonna be able to out damage Ruby D. And that's right, Keyboy! Again with a Violet Requiem, locking Justin up as Luffy goes in with a hammer swing and Keyboy gets out. Alba with Fracture now, CW goes over to Zabat for Sans again with the implosion steal to corral them together for that collapse. 11 and 0. Oh. And now it's gonna be Ruby D. Do you get slain by CW? My goodness, just like yesterday. The same thing is happening with this lineup that just has a few changes, but what the heck? Indonesia just pulling forward again. Myanmar, you guys have to understand, Myanmar was basically undefeated in the group stage. They just dominated time and time again. And now Indonesia, even though they lost in the group stage at this point, it looks like they are playing perfectly with this lineup with this composition of heroes even and albert yet to be killed yet to be stopped picks up a malefic roar i don't even know what myanmar can do at this point they have to somehow some way allow juno to get online and this is exactly why i say 
man, I don't like Roger in the gold lane. I'd rather have him in the jungle because it's just so difficult for him to farm up at this point to get the space that he needs to work with. And I mean, you're looking at the disparity in terms of the gold. He's also just very far behind CW right now. He hasn't died, which is great, but look at all the setup potential you have with these heroes and you have no follow-up. If he enters, if Juno tries to go in, even Lycan pounce in, he's probably gonna get blown up before he gets a chance to get a hit off. No, that's the t that's the troubling part about having this Roger in the gold lane. And so now you're forced, hold on. Lemoyne gonna be locked down, by the way, the dragon as well, and Keyboy will be locked down by everything, everything in the kitchen sink to get me on mark. Oh no. Their first kill in the game, CW going for the chase though. Ops is a Mon Force, will not be able to fully go for that kill onto Juno, who still has the Purify, but Indonesia wanna utilize this resource advantage now. As Ruby DD walks up again with the Shun Pool, Gonna be Albert walking up, dealing some damage back onto Ken, forcing him to half HP. Asans deals with them in the back as well, isolating and zoning them away from this tier two in the mid lane. Oh, Sans also picks up the implosion, so we might have to keep an eye on a possible play. Doesn't have a flicker, it went with the purify instead, but can still possibly use that in a quite a, a surprising way. You'll have to see it unfold. Taking a look at the items real quick too, you can see them coming into place already. CW has those three items working on the next here. Could be a Holy Crystal next or just going into even some more penetration because right now there's too much, there's just too much damage overloading Myanmar. When they get a pick off with Ruby DD, it's great, but it, he has to do so much work to get it through. So as they try to defend this tier two turret, look at this, Albert's just gonna go ahead and start up the Lord. He doesn't need the rest of the team to come here. They can just keep this, you know, Myanmar at bay from even entering their jungle. Ruby DD, like just trying to make something happen will just get poked down, you know? And that's just Sans. Sans is zero, zero and 10. It's nearly impossible to get the kill on this Valentina. So with that, Myanmar is gonna find themselves once again on the defensive trying to hold on the best they can for Indonesia the, with the tools they have and the fact that Sans has an implosion, they could possibly force this situation in here wow. and shields are gonna be popped already before that Lord even gets there. Holy Crystal just picked up by CW. So the damage is now even further ahead for Indonesia in terms of potential. Myanmar on the defense. A lot of battle spells already back up super. Oh, it's gonna be Ken. Just Almost decimated there by the fracture penalty zone on the three Lepe again with the engage. Now he's gonna make Zaman Force onto the back to win a lot of damage. Ruby DD will lose his life, and Sine as well just gets melted down, completely obliterated under the base turret as Indonesia continue the siege now into the top lane. That's gonna be base turret number two taken down as Lippy zones them again with some damage on that hammer, swinging it by. Ken going to take a little bit of that. Asans again also goes up a splash. Albert looking for the play. Keep on again with the spatial migration into the winter. Crown as he pops into Violet Requiem, but look at Justin who can't even defend. Juno forced back all the way to the fountain. Ruby DD spawns back in, but Indonesia 16 to 1 have just dominated Myanmar in a clean sweep. Oh man, a clean sweep. My goodness, the ending there like, I knew that they were very far ahead, Mirka. I knew that you know it was. Highly likely that wow. Indonesia was going to punch it in there, but usually we see teams being able to clear out the first Lord possibly, and it's, you know, at least buy a little more time. But Keyboy again on this Guinevere. He did it in the same fashion that they did yesterday crown, in the bro. game too. Exactly, the Winter Crown. And not only that, but he did the same thing yesterday with hitting three targets. But this time it was key because as they got more members off the list, they could punch it in and end the game here. And they get the sweep. And, you know, we don't know exactly what's going to set up for the grand final, but maybe Indonesia is on their route to deal with some revenge towards Malaysia. If Malaysia moves forward, we don't know that just yet because that's the match later on. But right now, they have secured their spot to the WEC in Riyadh later this year. But we'll take a look at the highlights here once again for Indonesia. Very, uh, very much a highlight reel for them. And it just looked like, you know, when, straight from the draft, we already knew kind of the game plan from Indonesia because we saw this yesterday and how dominant it was. And you're thinking, you know, Myanmar being undefeated and a great team themselves, they would be able to handle it. And I think when you look at the draft, that was the idea. Let's try to be tanky enough to survive the burst possibility that could happen like we saw from Albert yesterday on this Nolan pick plus the Guinevere. But I think it's just too much. It's you're, you're CC'd for so long 
with the spatial migration, with the Violet Requiem, and then, you know, you have that burst potential. And that's just the two that we're talking about. Even with this fight here in the mid lane, you can just see how overloaded things were for Myanmar so early in the game. I mean, you know, sim in a similar fashion, Indonesia, they knew their power spikes. They knew how to get control in the early part. They knew how to punish. And that's tough. You see that from Ruby DD. This is a good pickoff. But earlier, the amount of effort that has Four to happen ults. here for Ruby DD, yeah, to, to get close to a target to pick them off is so difficult. Great penalty zone into the base under the Zaman Force once again. And that's what makes this so devastating of a combination. Penalty zone, Zaman Force, you're forced to fight in it. There's Keyboy getting that set up to get Ken out. And then they just end the game here. And even CW there on the back just getting those extra kills, of course. And it was too late. I mean, 16 to 1. Under 11 minutes from Indonesia. Like, I, I don't know if this is actually their fastest game in account to some of the off-stream games that they have. But this was, this is dumb. Fastest stream game for out. sure. Fastest stream game for sure. You know, and... Uh, my goodness, Indonesia just had this game plan in mind from the draft. They executed it perfectly, and they got them the snowball that they needed here. Myanmar really didn't have room to breathe, because again, when you look at a Roger in the gold lane, it's difficult. You know, it's really difficult to farm up the way that you need to. You can see the huge gold difference between Juno and CW. The Roger just didn't work out the way that they wanted it and and it couldn't get online fast enough and even if it did i feel like even if juno had more gold more items that he needed the team fighting would have been very difficult even with a good implosion and everything you know maybe you could have turned that around and made something happen but i just think with a roger gold lane against this harith it was not going to work out in the end so unfortunately for the lineup even though it was tanky it had good vision with the you know having the novaria there but it was difficult. It was difficult to watch because of just how strong Indonesia played this lineup. And it was very reminiscent of yesterday. It really is. It, it definitely feels like deja vu. It's almost like they replayed the exact same game they played against Thailand. It also happened in game number two. But my question, right, is... It, uh, what is Myanmar? What happened to Myanmar? Myanmar yeah. were also so, so good. You were mentioning it already in their groups undefeated they didn't even drop a single no they dropped one game against cambodia and then after that they just steamrolled through everyone else in their groups to see them go out in this way is kind of sad you know especially you know after that interview with justin kind of promised us that he would meet us later on in riyadh in uh for isf for the main stage it's yeah. unfortunate for myanmar i really hope they come back stronger with this performance um because definitely there were a lot of things to dissect to go back and review again to come back stronger but Got to give it over to the player of the match, man. The man that has been getting the most hate out of every single member. Maybe most hate in Indonesia for the last two days, after, especially after the loss against Malaysia. <laughs> after the 2-0, everybody was just, you know, trying to find a scapegoat. And uh, yeah. who better than Albert, the guy who is replacing the main jungler usually for Fnatic Onik. And he just comes in today, yesterday as well, on these assassins and shuts everybody up. He shuts everybody up real good with another zero death performance on the assassin. So for Albert, this I think is his uh, like stat right now, his record right now. In all of the assassin games that were at least streamed, he hasn't died a single time. Poof. What is his KDA? Is my question. <laughs> right? Uh, like what 10 is his 0 today. KDA? Yesterday it was 16 0 on the Nolan, and it was 13 yeah. 0 with the Ling. So Someone calculate that, right? I'm not Someone that good math. at maths. <laughs> quick maths. But for you guys out there, go ahead and calculate it, man. We just want to be analysts. An insane number, bro. I think, all right, 13 plus 16, that's 29, right? And plus 10, so it's 39 and O. KD. The A, oh I'm not going to count the A, all right? <laughs> it's, it, you know, I, and I, I get it. Like, I think Albert really stepped up uh, because we know how, we know how, like, the fan base can be we know how you know fervorous they can be we know how dedicated this fan base can be and it's i feel like anytime you are let's say any team any team that you are the jungler for you have the most eyes on you because like for the longest time especially Mirko, on like, assassins 
Yeah, especially on Assassins, but also even before, before we had this kind of shift happen where um, it was so much of this, how good is this jungler for retributions? How fast can they retribution? How the retro, because it was all about the retribution dance. And then now it's kind of shifted where it's like, okay, you have these assassins once again shining and you still have the eyes on you. You know, you still have them on you because of the fact that they want to see you make the plays. But again, I think a big part of Albert's success and any of the junglers out there is obviously the team, but also Keyboy, a key component, whether it's Albert, you know, whether it's uh, whoever it may be. The point is, is this lineup works really well uh, with what they draft, whether it's a utility jungler, whether it's an assassin jungler, and they make it work. And just the, the teamwork that you see kind of unfold here from the Indonesian team is something that I think a lot of teams will look up to, and they probably have for a long time. I know the fan base, like I said, can be very uh, heated on what they want to say or what they feel. But at the end of the day, this Indonesian team right here has proven that even when they go and face adversity which was the loss that they faced they can they can step back up and we heard too you know like you have to think all these teams are preparing for multiple events and they get only so many hours in a day for scrimmage That's true. and you know so for for them this is part of it like the adjustments that they made just from you know that one loss that they had and then they came out swinging yesterday and today to the point where where is the weak point for them you know like this is just a, a very strong showing from Indonesia's ability to rise up against adversity. All right. And that's what we saw from them. So, you know yes. what the weak point is usually? What is the weak for, point? For, for this Indonesian team, particularly for this, for this roster, what is it's it? Usually they're interviews. They give very basic answers usually. So, we'll <laughs> test them with the interview. Let's test them. All right. Let's call up. Uh, let's go ahead and call up everybody. I'm going to make sure my VMIC is ready. And uh, we're going to call up the entire Indonesian team, by the way. So, let's go ahead and welcome up. Indonesian team, call them up here for the interview with me and Mirko. Of course, Hello. let's see. Hello. See, man. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, guys. Congratulations. Very strong Thank win. You. Um, and uh, oh wait, wait, oh wait, they just got the blank. I thought it was something else, man. Again, congratulations, <laughs> guys. You have locked in your slot to WEC 2024 and also you still have a grand final match later on which is just a you know it's a best of one who are you looking to see are you guys looking to see some revenge are you looking forward to Malaysia winning their next match to go face off in the grand final I need a translator, Mirko. I need a translator. Don't worry, I got you. Ah, yeah, kita tinggal tunggu sampai jadi yang itu kita lawan. All right. So according to to Sans, he he really it doesn't matter as long as he go, gets the face off against the best team. I guess you know, like whoever qualifies, he's fine with it. No problem for him. All right, so I got a question gotcha, as well. Gotcha. You know, I think I have to I have to throw this at Albert. You know, the guy who's been getting all the hate after that loss against Malaysia. How are you feeling right now, Albert? After having a solid performance, I, solid is an understatement. You were performing like a madman on these assassins. Zero deaths on the assassins. Uh, the stream matches at, at least, right? So yesterday, Albert, you had a great performance on the Nolan. You said that you know the opponents aren't that strong. Thailand weren't that strong. Today you faced off against number one in Group A. And you did the same thing. What was the idea behind that? How are you so good on the Nolan, bro? Nampak Nolan ni keren banget. Kerja musik. As. Si. All good. Okay. English. Is, that's the phrase nicely. We just answered biasa aja. It's like, it's normal. It's normal. Yeah, it's the, it's a classic it's one. A, this is why it's the weakness point of them, you know, for the interviews. You have any other questions? The interviews. <laughs> I was gonna say, I think I think Albert spoke more in his solo interview yesterday, you know, with the English. But um, uh, so I guess last question for you guys, for me anyway, are you enjoying the patch? Is this a refreshing change to the meta game? Are you guys enjoying it? Are you, do you like this uh, change from you know everything being utility junglers? Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Enjoy that patch, better boy. Keep Let's go. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> In English, in English, go, in English. Boy. In English, <laughs> boy. I'm not translating. English. <laughs> <laughs>
Oke, oke, kita try. Uh, for me, <laughs> yeah, so bad, so good. Like, we enjoy to learn something new, and we can try so many hero uh, gameplay. And Coach Yap very like the best. <laughs> <laughs> Coach Yep's happy. Yeah. Coach Yep's hey, thank you, happy. thank you, Key Boy. Thank you, guys. Right, Mirko, you good? I got one last question. Yeah, I got one last Go question, question here, and it has to be to the CEO. So, question to CEO, Captain Boots, Mr. Boots, CEO Boots. When will you play? I'm coach right now. <laughs> All right, so he's the boss right now. That's it, okay? Do you want to tease us, you know, Coach Boots? What do you want to pick for your team next time? Anything in the drafts? Hmm. Gua nggak bisa kasih tahu sekarang sih. English, English, English. I'm not translating boots. Coach boots. I'm not translating, bro. You gotta do it. Hey, you can English. Jaketnya ada tren banget, bro. Let's see, let's see. Let's see, let's see. Let's see. Okay, guys, let's thank see. you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys, so much. Uh, congratulations again, and uh, we'll see you guys in the grand finals. Okay, see you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Congrats. Thank you. There you go, man. CEO Boots. There we go, bro. Yeah. Coach Boots. We got Keyboy speaking English. It's all a bunch of new things happen here. I'm actually surprised. They're evolving, man. man. I don't know. They're no longer They're boring evolving. in interviews, man. <laughs> hey, Al what's up with Albert, though? He's way in the back and he spoke more English to us yesterday. Today you were shy. All right. Note to self, right? For every caster Note that wants to, to interview, uh, for for any caster who wants to interview this roster, get them one by one to do interviews. Especially <laughs> Albert. If Albert is with with his friends, he just becomes a shy boy. I don't know why that happens, but we got to get him get him alone. He was actually answering with some really good answers yesterday to our questions. Yeah, he was. Yeah, actually, uh, you know, he, he really did. But get, it was great to have the whole team there, you know, and, and after this this big victory for them, because, again, they secured their spot going to WEC. And that was the main thing for them. And now you heard it there. They don't, you know, for, for Sans and the rest of the team, I'm sure they don't mind who they go up against. Either it's Malaysia, they get to go for a revenge match or they go against Cambodia. Some another team they know very well from the international stages. They just want to go against the best team. And so this next matchup that you guys get to watch is it going to be Malaysia? Is it going to be Cambodia? Which team will be the second team to secure their spot for the WEC in Riyadh later this year? Where then everybody gets to battle it out, you know? So I, I don't know, man. When I look at this map, these this matchup right here. Malaysia is the team that beat Indonesia in the group stage, right? But Cambodia has looked pretty darn good too. I'm gonna say though, Malaysia, I, I feel like they've been cooking. They've been, they've got something going on here. And I think they could possibly end up taking the series, but I would love to see this Mirko because we only have a best of one later for a grand final, because at that point, both those teams that are there, they've already locked their slots in, right? It's just for, almost for bragging rights. I wanna see this go it three is. games. How about you? I really hope so, man, because Cambodia, even though they haven't been able to beat Myanmar, they haven't been able to beat at least the top dogs that we're, we're you know, expecting coming into this tournament, they've been able to pull off some big shockers too. And you can never, you know, write off Cambodia. They're always able to pull off some shockers. I, I think even in ISF 2022, when I got to cast them, a lot of teams, uh, a lot of countries were actually, you know, thinking, okay, Cambodia, they're not really going to be this strong. And they came out swinging. They came out with a crazy yeah. meta, with a crazy performance. and. They were able to, I think they, they they got top three in 2022. Top four. Yeah. They did. Yeah. Um, it, both the three teams have Let's a go. lot of good history. Yeah. Three game series. That's what we're hoping for. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be taking a short break, about a 10 minute break for you guys to watch in with us online. And uh, we're going to go ahead and get our refreshments. Hope you guys get yours as well. We'll be back after this. I'm Naisu. That's Mirko. We'll be back after the 10 minute break.